evening, everyone. Just going to give it another minute for a few people to come in and that sort of business and bits and pieces. So hopefully you can. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming along yet again. Um, had a few kind of messages about people who've been trying the escape rooms from last week and it's great to see that they've uh, been successful and useful um the next thing that we're looking to do tonight and next week is a two-parter really and um, because i want to take it to the next level uh, what we're going to be using is powerpoint to create interactive themed rooms and the aim for tonight's session really is to, to start by uh, building. So first we will start looking at avatars, creating avatars for use of the, the classroom. We're then mm -hmm. going to look at using Chrome tools to link Bitmoji, which is an Apple product on the phones, for our PC. And then we're going to look at building themed rooms for the interactive presentation. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some removable software so we can take images, get rid of all the background stuff and make it a little bit individual for us. And then how to create these links for video, sound, Google Maps and a bit more really. So it should be quite a lot. Uh, the second part, which will be next week, which um, Beth is very kindly just put the, the link in, is for taking it to the next level. So tonight's aim really is just to build the basic themed room. But next week, I'm going to be showing you how to take a PowerPoint and embed it for online use. So it's easier for students to share. They can't edit it. They can't play around with it. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you how to take what we've built to maybe create it into escape rooms, interactive assessment tools, in which the students work through different sections and different bits and pieces. So uh, to start with, um, I'll go to my normal thing. If you can't hear me or if I'm saying something that you can't see on the screen, um, please just give a shout and I'll make sure that I sort myself out. Um, what I'll also be doing is I'm, the, the first activity I'm going to show you is how to log on to Bitmoji. Now, if never one's, anyone's never heard of Bitmoji before, it's a tool which is on your, your iPhone. You can get it on your iPad as well, on the App Store, for making cheeky little avatar characters. Now, I've made one, but as you could have seen from my PowerPoint slides, they look nothing like me because I kind of got bored and started playing around with it earlier and gave myself a blue beard, some beautiful hair. You know, I was quite impressed with my hair. So to show you how Bitmoji works, I've made a little video so because it's all on my phone. So the first thing you need to do is to download the Bitmoji app, uh, which is on your mobile phone or your iPad, 
absolutely fine. And this is my little video here. So hopefully, um, if I go Sean Sheriff, you just nod your head. Can you see Bitmoji on the screen? Fantastic, wonderful. So this is my little silent video of using Bitmoji. Now, once you've logged into it, the first thing I'll say is this is not a piece of software you give to your students, uh, unless your school actively encourages the use of social media. This is something really just for yourself uh, to make something a little bit interactive for your classroom. So once you've got Bitmoji at the bottom hand screen, if I just kind of go back very quickly, you can see down here, you can see avatar. And that's where you're going to create your character. Because with your character, once you've made a person that looks like you, you can get them to do lots of different things and bits and pieces. So I'm going to go from my avatar and you can apply different haircuts. Now my original one kind of looked like me. It didn't have the kind of receding bit. I was a bit more nicer to myself. But you can do things such as change the hairstyle, change the hair color very quickly. This is all on my mobile phone. You don't, so this is where I kind of lost the plot a little bit and decided to give myself a much nicer haircut. You can go really extreme of it. So if you want, you can apply uh, different type, types of hair, different treatments if you fancy it. Um, you can add a beard. I thought I deserved a little bit of a beard. So I thought I'd have this one. And again, it's very nice for, for a user on your mobile phone, just like anything else, you just uh, kind of click on it. This is where I decided to give myself a blue beard. Um, I like that. It's nice. If you have a blue beard, you can pick that option. You know, I gave myself some eyelashes for some reason. <laughs> but the purpose of this is that you can make something that kind of resembles who you are. And having this avatar, especially when I show you the later bits you can do with it, it's, it's kind of like creating a stamp that you get from the student. I remember when I was at school and you saw that stamp that said, well done and Dioc and all. Oh, Ben de Gedig and bits and pieces. And, you know, this is a way of creating a digital stamp from you. Picks of my shadow. You can really kind of go all out with it. I think I was quite happy with the crown. So I, no, no, I changed my hat actually, because I was doing a school piece. I thought I'd give myself my graduation cap. There we go. You can go through, you can change your clothing, your attire and bits and pieces. And what it does is it does, because it's an app, it updates with different theme shirts and bits and pieces as you go along. I thought I'd go for the good luck cat, definitely untucked. So as you can see, this process is quite easy to do on your mobile phone. But once you've built this, it is connected uh, for the next piece of software I'm going to show you. This is actually what I wear on a, a normal basis, really. Jean cutoffs and a long jacket is, you know, it's what all the kids wear. So once you've completed this, you hit save avatar. And what this has done, as you can see, it's now added my little character into lots of different poses and lots of things. So it create these stickers. And we can use these stickers in our classroom. At the moment, they're just purely on the mobile phone. So when I do click on it, what happens is it, it means I can send it to people on my mobile phone, which is not what we want. I want to use it in the classroom. So here I've just put in the word school. And there we go. So we can get things such as that are linked to it. See something like this, this genius one, as soon as you click on it, it goes to people. But they're nice to create these little stamps. So once we've created our avatar on our mobile phone, the next thing is to go, well, how do we get it from the mobile phone? Which, yeah, I think a few people, you can get it on Android as well. How do I get it from there onto my computer nice and easily? Now. With Google, if I go to my Google, Pete's safe. 
The one thing with Zoom, it has this little top bar that loves to get in the blimmin' way, doesn't it? I'm going to put you down there. There you go. Now, with Google, it has the Chrome Store. And the Chrome Store is where you can get add-ons and bolt-ons for your PC. Uh, for this to work, you will have to use it on um, Google Chrome. So the app was called Bitmoji. Uh, this is, uh, session is being recorded by Beth and she will uh, put it on the YouTube channel uh, if you missed any of it at all. So the Chrome Web Store, if you've never used it before, it allows for added extras to your basic uh, browser you have here. And all I'm going to type in is Bitmoji. And there we go. Now, Bitmoji, once you've clicked on it, it adds it as an extension to your Chrome store, to your browser. So you can see at the top here, if you can't see it, there's a little jigsaw puzzle. You can click on that and you can see your little add-ons that you've got. And I've now got the Bitmoji add-on. So what it's done now is it's connected my updated avatar on my character onto here. So I'm going to put in, so say for example, I put in school. There we go. It's given me a lot of different poses for my character I've created. And there's a reason why we want it for today's session. So I'm going to put in, uh, I'm having a bad day at spelling. Do apologize. I'm going to put in Egypt. Fantastic. So once I've got my character, all I'm going to do is I can right hand click and then I save that image. So once I've uh, created it, put in what I want, I go save image. Let's just go for a basic pose. Oh, I quite like that one. Okay. So I'm going to save this image. So, pose to board. There we go. So that has now saved my Bitmoji character to my computer. I have that pose stored. Now, the benefit of this is, you, again, I can add it to students' work. I can put it on there. I can add that picture. It's nice if you've got something to so say some students done really well. So I can put in, well done. There we go. I've got these nice little things I can put on at the bottom, especially when I'm marking work. And the students will get, they'll see that little character, they know it's you, they recognize it. It's quite a nice little tool. So the aim for today's session is to create a themed classroom, building on using our character to help introduce it. And for this, I'm gonna use uh, PowerPoint. So let's go to my PowerPoint. Here we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with an absolute blank template. There's a reason I like PowerPoint as opposed to any other software. It's a lot easier. And when we come to move between rooms, especially as we progress through the sessions, um, it makes it a lot easier and clearer. And I want to start with that nice blank page. Now, when I say a themed room, what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, it looks like a, a large poster, um, but the students are going to have the ability to move around and click on objects in that scenery, which then are interactive. They'll take them to different things, videos, quizzes, tests. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to make an interactive worksheet. We're going to take all the features they'd normally have in a lesson, and we're going to create a tool which is themed, it includes you, it gives them a, a kind of aim and a, a task, and it just looks quite interesting. It's quite uh, simple for them to play with. So just saying we've got a few questions that are coming through. Uh, you can only create the avatar on the Bitmoji app or through the, the, your phone or your tablet, and that's Android and your mobile. Uh, so, unfortunately, there's not a Bitmoji creator on Google Chrome, just the ability to take the avatar and create it on there. So, the aim for 
my lesson that I want to make is I want to make a one that is themed around Egypt. For some reason, I don't know why, on a day I can't spell, I've decided to pick Tutankhamun as my phrase. And that's just, as a few of you have identified, what an error. I should have just gone with Valley of the Kings or something. I don't know why I picked this. Hmm. Indeed. So let's take my blank thing. So the first thing I want is I want to create my backdrop, my scenery. So let's go to just to Google and I'm going to go to Google Images. Let's go to Google Images. And I'm going to go type in. Oh, let's type in Egypt scenery. So let's pick one. Oh, that one looks perfect. There we go. First one's first. I've picked this one primarily because you've got lots of room here in which I want to add stuff because I want to add a blackboard. I want to add one of those old school TVs, you know, when they used to wheel it in, have the strap over it and stuff. That'll confuse a few of the kids. Uh, I want to put a stereo in there. I want to put a bookshelf. I want to put a clock. I want to put a map. I want to put one of those old school globes. Some of you are going, what is he talking about? This will make sense, I can assure you. So I'm going to take my stock image. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to paste this on my PowerPoint. So the nice thing with PowerPoint, there we go, let's put it there, is that I now have my basic image. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to crop this to make it a little bit easier. Joy, it's this blimmin' zoom thing, it's all over the place. So I want this image to fit to the uh, screen that we have. Just fit that. That'll do. Wonderful. Good. So this is my basic backdrop scenery. So this is what I'm going to be building on on top of. And now I want to add in my little picture of me. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to picture. Let's find my little picture of me. I called it pose to board. There we go. Nice. Brilliant. So now I have my little avatar. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So straight away, we're starting to build a little bit of character. Uh, I'm not so worried about the, so a few people have put on there about it being re reading and changing your data on a number of websites. It's nothing that I've ever had concerns of. And I think there's far, Google does a lot more reading of anything else. So it's not caused me any concern at all. So here's my basic backdrop. And now what I want to do is I want to get a blackboard, one of those old school ones. I want to put it there because I want to put the lesson aims on this blackboard. So I'm going to go back to Google. And I'm going to type in uh, school blackboard on stand. Let's have a look at this. So I'm just going to put that there. Nice. OK. I like this one here because I like that one because I think I can. I can play around with that one. I can write aims on it. I want to have something where I can write the lesson aims. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image and I'm going to call this blackboard. Just, let me just find it. Oh, I've lost it now. It's probably easier actually if I just go to Pixabay. Pixabay is one of the websites that Beth showed me for the images. And I found it absolutely brilliant. There's loads of free stuff on here. So let's go blackboard stand. Yeah. I want it quite straight on actually. Don't like those. The aim, what I'm looking for is I want something that when I get it, I can add text too, because I want to put the lesson aims on there for the students. 
So let's just go for that one. There we go. So I'm going to save this image. Now, what you're going to identify a lot of times when we take pictures off the internet is you're going to have this problem coming up. I'll show you what this problem is. There you go. Okay. Now, the problem here with this is um, that I now have a lovely picture, but I've got this horrible background in a way. What I want to have, I want to have no background like this here. Now, there's a great website which is called remove.bg. Uh, if you've never used it before, it's completely free, it's online. And what you can do is you can upload a picture. So let's go to where I saved it. So let's go to my desktop. There's my blackboard. And what it will do is it will take that picture and it will now remove the background from it. So if I go back to my PowerPoint here, let's go to my picture. There's my blackboard. And that's nice. So let's go send backward. Brilliant. I'm just going to make it actually a bit longer. There we go. Let's put you down there. Brilliant. So now it's got my blackboard. I can put my stuff in it. It hasn't got that silly uh, white background that is in the way. And that's quite a quick and simple little tool really to use. So what I want to do now is I want to think about putting some text on it. So I'm just going to go to my text box, type it in here, and let's, let's have aims for the lesson. Just make sure the font's in the right color. I'm going to go white. So you're going to read a bite size Egypt page, watch. Valley of Kings video. Uh, listen to the story of oh, why. It's something like that. Someone's going to tell me I've spelt it wrong, so I do apologize now. And complete. So let's start to play around a little bit with this. I want to make it look like a chalkboard. So there are a few fonts on here we can do where uh, we can make it a little bit more interesting. Again, the fonts you pick for your students, you, you, you kind of take into account learner needs and bits and pieces and make sure it is suitable for them. But what we've created now is we've created our backdrop. We've got our interactive classroom. i make my little a little bit smaller. And we start to build our interactive classroom for them. Now, what I want to do is rather than just a traditional way of having your activities in which it's just, here's a task, here's a task, here's a task. I want to make something which the students can engage with. They can see what they're going to do and they've got to hunt around and play for it. If they know that these are your aims, how can we get the next bit in? So I've got a video I'd like them to watch. So the video I want them to watch is this one here, Tomb of Tutankhamun, lovely. Now I can just insert the video with the link, with the embed link, but for the nature of this and for the nature of how it's gonna benefit you on the escape room, I wanna put in one of those old school TVs. So TV on stand school. Not one of these fancy ones. I want one of these. That's the one I want. Quite like that one there. So again, I'm going to save this image to my computer. Go to my remove background. Go back to the website and I'm going to upload the image. There we go, so remove the background. And I can now insert this into my classroom. Uh, 
Nice. Uh, can I flip it around though? Yeah, I want to. That's better. Because in Egypt, they have these TVs. I've seen them. They definitely have them. What else do I want to have in there? Well, I want them to go to this Google map website as well. So I could think about how could I do this? What's the best way to do it? Well, let's think about getting them into click on a globe, an old school globe. So how can I do it? Well, actually, let's get some old maps. Let's get some scroll maps and have these on the floor. Let's try and find something that looks quite interesting for them. So again, I'm going to save this image. Go to my remove background. And there we go. Uh, I am just going to ask. There we go. Thank you, Amwin. That was quite interesting. So I've got my map, I've got my TV. Uh, I wanted a quiz in there. So I've got to think how can I get a quiz in there? Well, let's try and find a quizzical looking mummy. Let's see if we can find some of that. If I find a picture, I want to have one of those walking mummies with. Let's put confused. Mm. Let's, put, let's try and find one here because I want to make it a bit fun. I want to make it a bit interesting for them. Uh, he looks a bit confused. He looks even more confused. We'll go for him. There we go. Fantastic. Happy with this so far? Let's take my picture. So what we're starting to do now is we're just starting to build up our classroom size. With other ones, what you can do is you can have uh, things such as the clock in the in the corner, all these bits and pieces, which I'll show on the kind of next room really for you to think about. Now, with this as an interactive tool, what we need to look at doing now is looking at going, well, how can we make this interactive? So let's take our first link. I want my video here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the video link, which I have done. I've just right hand clicked and I've just copied my link. And I go back to my PowerPoint and I'm going to right hand click on my TV. Go to hyperlink. And then all you do is just paste in the address that you've put in there. So there's my address. Let's go to my map. Go to Google Maps and then see these three dots here. What we're going to do now if we click on those three dots, we can just share or embed the image. Copy the link, back to my PowerPoint, right hand click hyperlink, and we've now got that there. So I've got my map linked, haven't built my quiz yet, but I can build that later on. So now we've designed a very kind of basic thematic classroom for them. So when the students are on the room, all they do 
is they click on the TV and it will take them to that web page that's there. There we go. They click on the map. And it will take them exactly to where we want them to go and the mummy at a later stage. Before I move on to the next part, are there any questions so far or any ideas that you think, well, can you do this? Good. Excellent. There's a few questions which are linked to the next part I'm going to show. So a few people are asking, do you have to present the show to get a full screen? Uh, and yes, uh, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, actually, I'll, be, I'll show you that today because we've got loads of time, which is fantastic. Can you link a YouTube video that you've made interactive? And that's the next part I want to look at. So let's take my YouTube video. So I'm going to take this and I want to make it interactive. Now, the best one for this again is Ed Puzzle, which I have used quite a lot in the last few weeks. And I'll show how we can link this Ed Puzzle now to our interactive quiz. So let's go to my interaction. I'm going to go to my, I'm going to create my new video. So I'm going to add content and I'm going to create a new video for this. What I can do here is I can just paste in my link. Excellent. So here's my video that I want, and I'm going to put my questions in. So that's, that's lovely. Fantastic. And here's my questions. So with Ed Puzzle, for those that haven't seen it, it's a really nice little tool for I've just added the YouTube link to it. And then I'm going to put in some multiple choice questions. So say, for example, we go there, put in my multiple choice question. and we can save it so once we've created this we're going to hit finish and we're going to hit assign so a sign is where I give it to a class. Now I can set it to any class. I'm not going to put a due date on it. I'm just going to assign it. Now th what this does by assigning it is it will give me my share assignment. So I'm going to hit share assignment and there's my copy link. Copy my link, go back to my PowerPoint, right hand click on where I want it to go. So I want it to be on that lad. There's my hyperlink, and I've now put my interactive presentation on there. So if I come to show it, click on my little character, and I'll take the students to this page here, where they now have the quiz questions and bits and pieces for them to play with. So the next stage and what uh, a few people have asked in the chat is to go, well, how do I now have it so it's not presented? Uh, this would be, I would do this on PowerPoint, not Google Slides. It's, it's a lot easier. There's a lot more features for us to play around. Now, the PowerPoint online doesn't have the option for adding a hyperlink. And this is why you've got to use it with a desktop version of it. Um, so it's got to have that feature, the hyperlink, which is on the desktop one for it to work. So once you've made this, I'm just going to save this. So I'm going to save it, uh, save it to my computer. I'm going to call it Egypt one and then save. So now I've saved it, 
I'm going to go to my, my Office uh, 365 account. Because this is the next step that's key for us is going, well, how can we get it out to students? How can we uh, have it so they can interact and play around with it? What we're going to do now is I'm going to upload our classroom. So I put it somewhere. There it is. Egypt one. So this is now uploaded to our OneDrive. Wonderful. And there it is. So all my links are already on there from the desktop one. The next step now is to go to share. So I'm going to go to share and I want the copy link. So I've copied the link there. Now, what I'm going to say is once you've put the copy link here, uh, you have that link which you can then use for your students. That's the next part that's going to be absolutely key for you. But what we want to have is we want to have it so the uh, students can play with it and they can interact with this presentation. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, the copy link here. Da -da 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 -da. And what we should be able to do, da -da -da -da, well, I can find it. We're looking for one section where we're going to play around with it, which I will find in a second. I can't see for some reason where that is. Oh, that's it. I want to turn off allow editing. Now, I can't have it for anyone with the link, which is an absolute pain, really. Um, but once we've got that copy link there, we can send it to the students and they can have access to it, uh, which is absolutely key for them to play around with. Uh, with Google Classroom, it would work because once they've got that copy link, they can still access uh, the file. But what I want to get is the embed view which for some reason I'm having a little bit of issue with at the moment. Uh, let's just see if it works this way. There is a little bit which I haven't prepped for tonight because I don't think we'll get this far. But what I will be doing in the next session is showing how you can embed this uh, for your students. Which I bet you any money, it's right there. I'm having a bit of issue with that today. So what I will do is uh, for next week's one, I'll remember how to get that embed view. I didn't think we'd get this far ahead with it really. Uh, so it's quite good. Now, I'll do it on PowerPoint, definitely not on Google Slides. Um, now what it would work, if you go to your Google Classroom, you can have that link so anyone can access access it and can see it. And the aim for uh, next week when I show you how to create the embed view is that when students click on it, they won't need to have that link there for them to provide their, their answers and bits and pieces. So you can just put the add link add it in there so your students, all they'd have to do then is click on that. Now at the moment I've not got it set for I've not got it set for embed view, which is what you want to do uh, for it for the next stage. Now once you've created your themed class, the aim is to go, well, how can I get the students to they've they've got this lovely theme, there's lots of questions, there's lots of bits of work that they'll need to do. But the next stage is to go, well, how can I assess this? How can I engage and see whether they've actually learned anything? And there's two ways of doing this, using both Google Forms and Microsoft Forms. Um, 
just in the tech box, if you very quickly, I'd just like to get a kind of poll. Who would much prefer to see it using a Google piece of software or Microsoft? I think the general rule of thumb at the moment is uh, a lot more schools are using Google software. Got a few for Google, got Microsoft, Google, Google, Microsoft. I'll show both, I'll show both. So if we go to, in Google Classroom, you've got uh, Google Forms. And Google Forms is a great way of getting that student answer based off this thematic classroom. So if I go to Google Forms, what I want to have is somewhere where the students can provide their answers uh, and give it to you as the tutor. So I'm going to go to blank. And I'm going to call this one Egypt themed room. Julian, sorry, can't see anything. Oh, you're, you're missing out. It was yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. So what I've done, uh, I'll just go back. I went to Google Forms, went to blank, and I started a new one here. So I'm going to say, use this form to uh, send in your completed theme answers. And this is where I can have the questions. Now, I can do quite a few things with Google Forms, which I really like. So I can have that first one as, um, where did the map take you? What did you see? And I can have this as multiple choice, but I'm going to have it as a short answer. So the students are now they're clicking on it and see where the map takes them. And then we can add the next one. What did you learn? Again, it gives them the option to create it. Now, the good thing with using Google Forms though, for those that have not played with it yet is I can now send this via a link. So there's my link. And I'm going to copy that hyperlink. And I'm going to go back to my original themed room. Because what I want to have on here is I'm going to go insert. I'm going to go a bit of word art. And I'm going to say answers. I'll make that a little bit smaller. Oh, I should really have locked that, sorry. And I can right hand click on that. I can add it as a hyperlink and I can paste the link into my Google form. So once the students are on here, what will happen is They'll be able to click on that and it will take them to the Egypt themed room. Now, if you do do any quiz or anything, make sure you get them to put their student name there. But if they are going through Google Classroom, which the link will work, it should attach. So I can say it takes us to Egypt. What do you learn from the video? Little watcher. And they can submit it. Now, the nice thing I like about using Google Forms, and we'll find it again with Microsoft, is that those responses are then collated. You can see who has written, when they sent it in. So it's a way of, yes, they're having fun with the themed room and they're watching it, but there's still an expectation for a level of work. Now, the same software is available on Microsoft, and this is called, where is, and there it is, Microsoft Forms. So this is on Office 365, I'm doing this one here. And I can do exactly the same again. So Egypt theme. And I can put the same questions in. So I'm going to give them a text answer. What was on the map? And what did you do? Fantastic. There we go. And I can share this. There's my share link. 
go back to my uh, PowerPoint slide from earlier, and I can have that as my hyperlink now and paste the same thing in. So if my student comes on here, they click on the answers, and it takes them to this very same thing. Now, very much like with Google Forms, Microsoft Forms still gives you the ability to gather responses from the students, very much like the Google piece of software. So both of them are a great way of, when you're creating these themed rooms, that yes, they can watch the video in that, but they're still actually doing some work at the same time. Uh, any questions popping up so far? I'm just going to go back to the chat. I kind of left it there. So yeah, a lot of people saying the school has switched to, to Microsoft. It has become quite a popular option. Good. So let's just see before we uh, go, kind of another use of this. What you can do as well, and what I've, I found quite useful is creating um, classroom activities. For, so it's not just theme, but having kind of like a reference base for students. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to type in school background classroom, because what I want to do now is I want to make something which uh, the students can build up and see over a period of time. So let's take this classroom here. I'm just going to go through and show you how you can make one quite quickly, uh, which is beneficial for your room. So we're going to take, there's my lovely background. That'll do perfectly, there we go. I'm going to put in a bookcase. It's fine one with books in it. Oh, that'll do perfectly, there we go, we'll have that one. Now someone said there's a removed background thing on PowerPoint, is there? Who, who's able to show that one? Who, Someone also put in the message box that there's a format box for removing the background on PowerPoint. Was that Deborah? Yeah, it was me. Dana. Yeah, um, if you pick, um, if you press on the photo that you added on the slide. Yeah. Um, is it okay if you show me the screen so I can see? Sorry. It's always useful, isn't it? Actually, if I did that. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, on format at the top of this slide, like yep. you can see that um, it says format tab. Oh. Yeah, and then there you go, remove tab. No way. Okay. Oh my days. It should remove the white. Oh. There you go. Oh, well done. First. <laughs> Where are you? You're hiding yourself. You're not even coming out, and you've you've proven something amazing. Dana, at least put your video camera on. Get a round of applause. <laughs> no, th no, thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> I've been using that remove website for so long. So <laughs> thank you for that, Dana. That's saved everyone no, a lot of time. So yeah. Kudos. Um, I'll just show that again. And what we'll do, Beth, we'll edit the video so it looks like I knew that myself. Okay. Um. So we're going to put in a picture. That's a great bit of knowledge. Thank you. So insert. We'll go to my picture. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Can't see again, Julian. Sorry. I'm on form for it tonight from hiding stuff from you, aren't I? So I'm just going to put in my picture. There's my TV. I'm going to remove the background, which is under format, and you just select the amount you want, which I knew, I knew that, and then hit keep changes. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I want to build something in which I have this uh, classroom for students. So the one I have at the moment for my class is one where um, each week we add a different re resource for them that they may find useful, whether it's a book, uh, whether it's um, an activity, something that's going to be beneficial. Again, how to add my picture. 
We're going to go back to the Bitmoji tab at the top. Let's get rid of that. There's my Bitmoji, and I'm going to put in my teaching. There we go. So I'm going to right hand click, I'm going to save that image. Go to my PowerPoint and I'm going to insert her. Fantastic. So these little themed rooms, it's a great tool for building something that allows students to play around with. Uh, in the next session, um, which will be coming up, my aim will be to show you again how to embed these so you can add them uh, for other people so you don't have to apply it as a PowerPoint. Uh, and what we'll do then is show you how to build thematic rooms and go through. And I've got a few more tools I really want to add to it uh, to help guide you. Uh, someone's just asked to at, remove the background again. So let me just find a picture. I think someone else has put on there, it, it kind of works a lot better with, um, it's a bit of a pain with the more complicated shapes. So maybe you could try both of them really. We've got the, uh, the remove BG website. So I've got my picture. I go to format. I'll just put on. remove background and then what it does is it makes whatever's in pink is what you want to get rid of and once I've done that I hit keep changes and there's my removed background picture if I want to have a classroom with multiple bookcases in there uh, I'm not sure whether I went a bit too fast on that but if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat box. More than happy to go through. Hopefully you'll start to see, well, I can take bits and pieces from this because my aim next week is to build it into a, a themed escape room, looking at a haunted house uh, and embedding it into browsers for students. Uh, so any questions, please put them in the chat box and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. I think Beth's just put in the link to the next session, if you wish to attend. I'm going to have to watch this one back and see if I went far too fast. I do apologise. Any questions, put them in the box. Uh, if not, thank you so much for coming along and see you later on. Uh, Beth, is the escape room training from last week, is that on YouTube, is it? What's the website for that? Uh, yes, Lisa's put that on YouTube and let me just get the link. I'll put the link in chat. Uh, that's our YouTube uh, channel link in chat. So yeah, escape rooms is there along with everything else that we've, uh, well, as much as we, we can that we've put up there. There will be a certificate after um, both sessions anyway. Um, we, we do them for every session that everyone attends. So. Brilliant. I can't wait for part two. I'm going to have to just check my pace now because I thought it was great, but you know, I'm, I'm quite techy anyway, so um, I, I'm you shouldn't really listen to me. Uh, when I try to use Ed Puzzle in class, when I try to show the video, uh, if students are using Ed Puzzle, they will need to have an account for it. That's the one thing with it. Now, you can use your Google login. The, the Gmail or the Hub account to log into Edpuzzle. So if you give them a link and it says they'll need to log in, they can use the, the Gmail or the Hub account. Um, if they've moved to Microsoft Teams, they can create one using their Microsoft account as well. So 
So they can use those, that's absolutely fine. Um, the thing is, it, it's good to have that login details because it gives you an idea of who's added what question. That's why they need to have a login for it. Um, it's, it's with the Edpuzzle, what you can do as well is you can make a video, show it to the whole class and you can have a poll off it as well. Um, so maybe you could use it in that way where they don't have to log in themselves, but they could watch the video and then it, it naturally pauses where you've planned uh, the questions. Ah, the one note, if you're doing the password function, it has to be the desktop version of OneNote. So it might be worth asking your IT team about getting the desktop version of OneNote onto your works laptop if you want to make the password. Um, what I'm doing for next week is turning these thematic rooms into thematic puzzle escape rooms. So if you can't get the OneNote desktop version to make an escape room, at least next week's session, we'll be showing you how to do the same thing, but using PowerPoint. Um, with OneNote, I always found it quite suitable for your high level primary school students in your secondary school. But with the PowerPoint one, we can kind of make it more tailored to younger students. So it's a bit more suitable for primary school uh, children. So hopefully that's useful. What are you crocheting there, Beth? Oh, I made, it's, it's taken me about two years to make this. It's a kind of a blanket-y thing. Did it start off like originally you were like, I'm going to make one doily and then you just went I, out of hand. Yeah, it was just one little hexagon and then it kind of grew. Um, so now I'm just, you can see all the little bits of thread. So it's I'm impressive. just- I'm just weaving them out. Oh, you should have seen what I made. Um, th this is one, one of my recent creations. That's wonderful. Does she yeah. have a name? Not yet. No, I mean, we could have a little competition, couldn't we? We're, we're making, I'm making this for um, uh, like a charity thing. So I work with a group of, um, meet with a group of crafty ladies, as we, we call ourselves, um, and we make things to, for charity. We've only just started as a group. So, um, oh. but yes. My, my daughter reckons she looks like Jemima. I gave her purple hair because my daughter's got purple hair, but you Jemima's know. Jemima's a good name. Jemima's yeah. a good one. Yeah, so. Jemima Puddle Duck or whatever you want to call her. But yes, I'm going to make another one with pink hair for next week. So I'll see if I can get it done in a week. Oh, brilliant. I could Someone do a should... Julian one. Oh, I definitely got to have a Jules one. <laughs> it's like, it, it's really fiddly. It's a problem, you know, <laughs> just like, oh, for Pete's sake. It just appears when you don't want it to appear. <laughs> yeah, I will see what I can do. <laughs> Someone's put in the chat that the TV should have been bigger. We used to love it when that got wheeled in. <laughs> yeah. I used to love the fact that used to, our, our one, it used to have that little lock and key behind the VHS, the pop down VHS. They're like, oh, kids can't have the videos. Oh, this is great. Okay, well, Wonderful. if no more questions, everybody's got lovely comments again, as usual. Thank you for, for attending. Um, next week, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm doing, did I tell you I'm doing an escape room for um, our Christmas party? I said oh, that last week, didn't I? Yes, so after next week, I think I'm going to decide then which, which one I'm going to use for yeah. the escape room. The, the one next week, the one I like about it, when I saw it in use, um, because I make these and all the stuff I do with you guys, I practice on my students first. My <laughs> students are guinea pigs. If it doesn't work with them, I don't bring it to these. Nice. Um, and the thing I liked about it was it was quite collaborative. Whereas the OneNote one was quite individual because I think the way it looked, it looked very formal. With these, the, these themed ones with the Egypt theme and the, I kind of made one like based on like the, the kind of think of the crystal maze, you know, he had like the yes. techno zone and stuff. And they were all like going, oh, I can't find the high And they talked to each other quite a lot more than the one note one. And that's why I think it just, it fits quite well with it. So yeah, you can make a decision. What would be really cool, especially for your Christmas one, is to take a picture of maybe offices and you could have it as like a murder mystery with each room being... And we'd like all be a... killing our boss. <laughs> <laughs> I hope That'd David isn't watching this. 
that would be yeah. quite cool you can have like a you can have a different if you know like rooms that you have around where you work you could have it as like yeah murder mystery and you could take a picture of different members of the staff lying on the floor or something <laughs> Oh, I saw the best Zoom background the other day, and it was, uh, it was, oh, what was it? Someone had it. It was, you know, where President Trump had his, they accidentally booked the four thingy, four seasons landscaping gardening. Did you hear I, about that? I, no. He booked for his press conference to say, unfortunately, you know, I'm, I've not won or whatever. Uh, he thought he booked, they thought they booked the Four Seasons, but they'd accidentally booked the Four Seasons Landscaping Company in America, which was in between, it was in between something like a, um, a lingerie store and like a, a Mexican restaurant, I can't remember, but they still held the press conference. If you get the chance, look up Four Seasons Landscaping. Mm. But I saw somebody who had it as a Zoom back, and I thought that's amazing. So, I, mean, it was, I love it. Maybe I could do a, a Donald Trump themed escape. You room. could do a Donald Trump emoji, couldn't you, to to lead the escape room? You know, you'd have to build a wall somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Oh. oh, right. Yeah. Some lovely comments there. Thank you so much uh, oh, more than for welcome. tonight, Julian. I can't wait. I about week. the pace that went way way quicker than I thought it would. Um, comments are really happy. Yeah, but I'm very critical. I had nine minutes left. <laughs> so. but, yeah, but you, you know, other other times you go over, so it's 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 um. I think I think as as teachers or or you know when you're working with children, you feel that you've got to use every single second, don't you? And, and sometimes it's not needed. Okay. Well, thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much for that, Beth. And I will thank see you. you next week. Yeah, will you end the meeting for everyone? Because you're, you're hosting. I will. So goodbye, right. everybody. Thank you. Bye. See you later.